Good evening. I'm Max Rudin, publisher at the Library of America. On behalf of our chairman, Ron Daniel, our president, Cheryl Hurley, our directors and staff, welcome. For those of you who don't yet know, the Library of America is a nonprofit enterprise dedicated to making permanently available authoritative editions of great American writing. Tonight, we celebrate John Kenneth Galbraith, The Affluent Society and Other Writings, number 208 in the Library of America series, edited by distinguished political economist James K. Galbraith, who brings what you might call a uniquely informed perspective to the task. In the hands of John Kenneth Galbraith, Arthur Schlesinger wrote, economics becomes a branch of literature. Galbraith is the first economist published in the Library of America. He joins the series for his qualities as a writer and not, clearly, for his ability to foresee the economic future. Listen to this wild prognostication written in 1954 from the great crash 1929, one of four classic works collected here about a possible future boom and bust. Galbraith writes, no one can doubt that the American people remain susceptible to the speculative mood, to the conviction that enterprise can be attended by unlimited reward in which they individually were meant to share. A rising market can still bring the reality of riches. The government preventatives and controls are ready. In the hand of a determined government, their efficacy cannot be doubted. There are, however, a hundred reasons why a government will determine not to use them. They will say firmly that controls are not needed. Good thing he was wrong about that scenario. Recent events have put Galbraith back on our cultural radar, but what makes him a remarkable writer goes deeper. Elsewhere in the Great Crash, after an elegant discussion of the 1920s stock bubble and the role of interest rates, credit, foreign investment, and the investment trust, comes the crucial human factor, why those who might have stopped it didn't. Galbraith writes, booms, it must be noted, are not stopped until after they have started. And after they have started, the action will always look, as it did to the frightened men in the Federal Reserve Board in February 1929, like a decision in favor of immediate as against ultimate death. The immediate death not only has the disadvantage of being immediate, but of identifying the executioner. Galbraith writes about people, people with motives, aspirations, and weaknesses we recognize, caught up in a world that feels convincingly like our own. In his work, economics is not an esoteric science that aspires to the purity of mathematics. It's part of the actual human world, inseparable from psychology and society, politics, and the realities of power. The brilliant analysis of economic institutions and processes opens onto questions of their meaning and value. Shouldn't social health and wealth be measured in some other way than how many goods we produce? Who speaks for the common good? Who makes sure the economy serves democracy? The opposite of these vital, real-world complexities are the rote explanations routinely trotted out by clueless or agenda-driven authorities that Galbraith called the conventional wisdom, a phrase he coined. Galbraith took a certain delight in flying in its face. So have our two distinguished guests. Like him, both are influential public intellectuals whose work shares with his a conviction that government and the economy are meant to serve people, not the other way around. Bill Moyers is our preeminent public commentator. Before coming to television journalism in 1970, he was a newspaper reporter, ordained Baptist minister, deputy director of the Peace Corps, where he first met John Kenneth Galbraith, press secretary and key aide to President Lyndon Johnson, and publisher of Newsday. He has said, the actual experience of regular people is the missing link in a nation wired for everything but the truth. For 40 years, his broadcasts have set journalistic standards of liveliness and intelligence, and they have been honored with every conceivable award 
for contributions to journalistic integrity and investigative reporting. James K. Galbraith holds the Lloyd M. Benson Chair in Government Business Relations at the Lyndon B. Johnson School of Public Affairs and is Professor of Government at the University of Texas. Former Executive Director of the Joint Economic Committee of Congress, his most recent book is The Predator State, How Conservatives Abandoned the Free Market and Why Liberals Should Too. Early in 2008, Galbraith used the 25th annual Milton Friedman Distinguished Lecture to launch a sweeping attack on the free market consensus, contributing to what has been called the Keynesian resurgence, and landing him twice on Bill Moyer's journal for expert commentary on the economic crisis, and not incidentally, on the renewed relevance of his father's work. Now, here are Bill Moyers and James K. Galbraith to discuss the unconventional wisdom of John Kenneth Galbraith. 